All right, everybody, what is going on? We are going to go with a mobility class today. Let me make sure that this is on back here. Yes, we are good to go. All right. So I have a four step um, mobility class I'm going to teach today. First thing we're going to do are neck and shoulders. Uh, scapula cars, axials, wall lift offs, that type of thing, some infinity and swimmers. Then we're going to get into the spine, then we're going to work with the hip, then we're going to get into some standing cars and some axials, and then we're going to get into uh, the feet and the knees. Okay, so we have four steps here, neck, shoulders, back, um, hips, and then knee and feet. Okay, we'll start from the top. All right, so what we're gonna do is if you need to, I have a box here, okay? So any of these exercises you can do on a box. Uh, what I want you to also write if you're watching right now is uh, a question or a suggestion. So give me a question on what, what types of things do you wanna know? And then maybe make a suggestion like, hey, why don't you add this or why don't you add that? Um, any type of feedback would be good. Where is the fitness community going right now? Do you believe that people are watching this on TV? Do you think that we, do you think there's people that are gonna rewind these live feeds and, and actually do them at their houses? Um, do you think people are gonna buy into this at home craze where trainers are gonna give you know free training online and um, you know our users actually gonna go on their devices and and, and follow along. That's the question. Uh, do you, I'm asking you, the viewer, do you currently um, watch these videos and then perform them, or do you just watch them to watch them? Um, because, you know, are people doing their own exercises? Are they thinking about their own routines, or are they watching videos and trying to get hints and ideas? Those are my questions for you before we get started. So, again, we're going to go ahead and start with the neck and shoulders. Option one will always be seated just like this, okay? Option two, you're going to start standing and squeeze the fist and try to spread the floor apart with the feet. Keep the body nice and tight here. Squeeze the abs. Stand up nice and tall. From here, we're just going to flex the neck down. Rotate. Bend into the side. Extend the neck back. Rotate to the other side, bend into that side, and then rotate all the way down and flex down. One more, squeeze your fists all the way back, all the way around, and down. Other way, rotate, bend, extend, rotate, bend, and flex down. One more, squeeze your fists. And it goes all the way back, all the way around, all the way down. Good. Now for the scapula, if you have a wall, we're going to be using a wall today. For the scapula, what we're going to do is push one hand into the wall, okay? And we're going to retract the scapula and protract the scapula, okay? So you can do that like this. But I'm going to give you a side angle just like this. And you're going to try to rotate as well. So you're going to elevate, retract, depress, and protract, elevate, retract, depress. And then go the other way. Okay, switch arms. Just start with retraction and protraction to start. Then add the elevation, retraction, compression, protraction. Then go around two ways the other way, two rotations the other way. Now we're going to perform some swimmers, putting the fingertips behind the back of the head, just like this. 
And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to tee out the arms. Then we're going to make a Y. T, Y, and a T, and then an A. And then a T, and then a Y. Let's go back. Fingertips touch. Start here. We're going to make a Y. Hold. From here, we're going to internally rotate at the shoulders. Let's try and turn those biceps down. Squeeze the abs. Hold here. Then from here, we're going to go to our T. We're going to keep internally rotating at the shoulders. Squeeze the fists. We're going to go to our A. Keep internally rotating at the shoulders. Try not to jet the head forward. Keep the chin in line with the sternum. And then from here, we're going to try to get those fists all the way up the back. And then relax the fists as high up as we can. And we're going to start the process the other way. Take a big inhale. Extend. Externally rotate all the way to that T. And then all the way to the Y. Full external rotation. And then elbow bend. From here, make a Y, external rotation, internal rotation, all the way to the T, the A, then try not to jump the head forward, elbow hinge, relax. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, hold, radiate. Extend, externally rotate, T, keep externally rotating, bend. Good. From here, we have our left fist behind the back and our right fist behind our neck. Hold here. We're going to squeeze our fists. We're going to try to get those fists to touch. If they don't touch, that's fine. But we want to be able to at least touch the fingers together. If not, we're going to try to gain some space here. So squeeze the fists. From here, extend both elbows. Make a T. And then we're going to make an I. And then try to bring the fists together. Extend. T. An eye, and then fist together. Eye, all the way to T, and hold here. From here, squeeze the fist. We're going to actually rotate at the shoulders. The biceps go back. Then we're going to internally rotate at the shoulders. Externally rotate. Internally rotate. Externally rotate. Then internally rotate. From here, we're going to bend the elbows at a 90 degree angle. And then fingertips toward the sky. We're going to reach all the way up. And then we're going to bring those elbows down. Reach all the way up, all the way down, up, hold here, internally rotate, sorry, X, or externally rotate, so the fingertips go back, squeeze the fists, and then internally rotate, externally rotate, internally rotate, try to turn those biceps forward. And then biceps back, hold here, and relax. Okay, now we're gonna try some shoulder lift offs. So, using a wall, you do one at a time just like this. And I'll go like this so you can see me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring one fist into the wall, our right fist, for example, or you can shadow me. We bring our right foot forward, and then from here, we'll get into our Full range of motion of shoulder flexion. 
Feel a good stretch and hold and breathe. Inhale, four, exhale, eight. Focus on your breathing here. And then from here, we're going to start pressing the fist in an iron shoulder and lap into the wall or the barrier. Hold. Push 10%. 20%. 30%. 40%. Radiate the whole body, 40 to 50%, 60, 70, all the way to 80 to 100% of your safest and greatest effort. Hold, five, four, three, two, and then we're going to try to lift off of the barrier. Go deeper into shoulder flexion, hold here. Go as far as you can without compensating with. Scapular elevation, hold, five, four, three, two, and back to your passive stretch. You can go maybe a little bit deeper, and then you can lift off from there and practice passive range liftoffs. Inhale, radiate, lift off, and then set it back down, and you can make that Challenge. I'm going to go ahead and switch side. Hold and breathe here. Try to inhale for four, exhale for eight if possible. Just focus on your breathing. Just allow all this tissue to stretch. Focus on your breathing. And then from here, start pressing the fist, shoulder, lat, foot into the ground, squeeze here, 10%, push into the barrier, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, contract the whole body, 70 to 80, all the way to 100% effort. Five, four, three, two, and then try to lift off the barriers. Just squeeze the ground with the feet first. Lift off the barrier, hold it. Five, four, three, two, and then back down. And then you can go deeper next time. Practice your passive range lift off. Just like that. Okay. You can also get, I saw Hunter doing this one. You can do internal rotation here. So kind of bring your side of the body to the wall. The leg closest to the wall. Step that forward. Step that outside leg back, and then see out one arm that's closest to the wall, bend the elbow 90 degrees, take the opposite hand, and bring it on top of that wrist. From here, pass a hold, one to two minutes, pals, start pushing that hand and fist into each other, creating an isometric load. 10%, 20 to 30, 40. And as you progress in this skill, you'll, you'll go higher amounts of intensity and then your brows contraction, you try to lift that fist away from the palm toward the wall, lifting away. And then finally your new end range here, same process, fist into fist, Pals, rails, pull toward the wall, back to your passive. You typically want to do that passive stretch for two minutes. Okay. Good. 
have used this before? I don't remember. No. It's like that, yeah. Passive stretch. So, again, for internal rotation, passive stretch, one to two minutes. Pals contraction, press the hand into the wrist, wrist into the hand, isometric load from 10, 20 to 30, 40 to 50% effort, all the way to 100% effort. Browse contraction, try to pull that fist toward the wall or lift it away from the hand. And go back to your passive hold and repeat as needed. Okay. Um, you may also be able to do that on a box, but the preferred method is you gotta get that clock working. There we go. So for internal rotation, get in the fetal position, heads on a block, just like this. Now you don't need a block, you don't need a tennis ball, you just go like this. You feel that stretch. Okay, so that would be more hip, uh, shoulder internal rotation. All right, so now we're done with the, the shoulders and neck. Actually, we forgot our glenal humeral. We did not do a full controlled articular rotation. We're going to do some of those now. So if you have a tennis ball, that's great. If not, that's fine. What we're going to do is kneel, or you can stand, or you can sit. Just make sure that you have access to range right here, okay? So any, any way you like from here, if you have a ball, tennis ball, lacrosse ball, that's great. Um, and then I'm going to squeeze. If I have two, that's even better. Okay. Squeeze. Give you a side view. One flexion. Internal rotation to extension. Keep internally rotating at the shoulder. Extension. External rotation all the way down across. Internal rotation at flexion. All the way to extension, extension, external rotation, all the way to flexion. So from here, flexion, turn the bicep forward, extend all the way, make a big circle, back of the hand next to the side. Extension, unwind the shoulder, reach back and up, all the way across the body and down. Switching side. Flexion, internal rotation, all the way to extension, to adduction. Extension, external rotation, all the way across the body, and down. Okay? So that was our neck and shoulders. Get a sip of water. And you can go back to the neck. Get a couple more each way. Go back to your scapula. Go the other way. All right, all right. So now we're gonna go with some peak spine cars, cat camel, and some hip extension, okay? So T spine cars, we can do those standing, we can do those sitting. So if we're still sitting, we can just bring our hands across the chest, round the back down, rotate, bend, extend, just like that. If you want to progress and you have a block, something to squeeze, you can do this. You can use a pillow, you can use a med ball, uh, you can use really anything to kind of create more radiation by that squeezing effort. And remember, the thoracic spine starts around right here 
and goes down to mid back. And so when we utilize our thoracic spine, it's going to look like this. And then we're going to rotate, and we're going to bend, and we're going to extend. So you don't want to flex too far forward with your hips start going back. And you don't want to rotate so much that this opposite hip goes forward. So you have to really be careful when you're doing that. And when you're seated, same thing, reflection, rotation, bend, extend, bend, and rotate, press down. Okay, just like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start those. I'm going to do mine standing. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to give you this angle here. I'm going to go ahead and flex down. Rotate, bend, extend, rotate, bend, and flex down. Keep rotating and bend, extend back, rotate, flex down, all the way, go the other way, flex and rotate, extend, Lightly bend, rotate, flex down. One more, all the way around. Rotate, bend, extend, rotate, bend, flex down. Okay? Now we'll go to our hands and knees. If you can't get down to the knees easily, then you can just sit in a chair. This will be your uh, cat, and this will be your camel. Okay, so I'm going to go from cat, you know, around the back, tuck the chin. You do the same thing if you're seated. Breathe and hold. Now I'm focusing on pushing the ground forward and pushing the ground back. You extenuate that stretch, we'll tuck those hips in. Really rounded back here. This is a cat here. You can do this in the seated position too, or standing. Breathe. And then from here, we're going to articulate starting at the coccyx, the hip area. We're going to start to pelvically tilt forward, anterior pelvic tilt. Drawing the coccyx and lower lumbar down. From L1 to L5. And then from here, starting at T12, going all the way up the T spine. All the way up C7, 6, 4, all the way up to 1. Breathe here. Now just squeeze the ground, the abs here. That is up. Extend the spine. And from here, starting to tuck the chin. Draw the back of the neck up toward the sky. Draw upper trapezius up toward the sky. Followed by the lats, upper back, mid lats, mid spine, all the way to the low T spine, all the way to the lower lumbar. Sacrum all the way to coccyx or tailbone. Now let's go ahead and squeeze the ground with the abs. And then push the ground apart with the back. Keep the back rounded. Let's articulate from low spine all the way to upper spine. One vertebrae at a time. 
keep the upper back rounded and head tucked in as you segment the low back to the mid back. From the mid back to the upper back, spine. All the way so the head is looking up. And then from here, start the tail again. Try not to skip any vertebrae. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do some hip extension. So we're going to lay down on the ground. We have a towel or like a rag or a shirt. You can put that just like this. We've got to fix our timer. <clears throat> Must be timed at something. Not really worried about the timer actually today. Don't worry about it. All right, so for hip extension, do a passive range lift off. So we're in a passive range. And then we're going to lift off. Same thing, passive range. Lift off. One more. Passive range. Lift off. Now we're going to add some height. If you don't have a block, you can use a pillow. Or you can use some cushions or some blankets. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bend my knee. I'm going to press my opposite foot into the ground. And I'm going to try to lift off and hold. Five, four, three, two, and slowly bring it down. Try not to let the hip externally rotate or abduct. Bend the knee, inhale, radiate, lift off. One, two, three, four, and slowly bring it down. One more, inhale, radiate, lift off. One, two, three, four, and five. And go ahead and switch sides. If you don't have the block, you don't need it. But if you've got some cushions, that's good too. Now we're do it without anything first. So just pass the range, hip extension, lift off. <sighs> Inhale, radiate, lift off. <sighs> and from here, I lift off the block with the knee bent. Inhale, radiate, and lift off. Inhale, radiate, lift off. One more. Inhale, radiate, lift off. And then from here, go ahead and push that out of the way. We have our prone swimmer. So we're going to do a couple swimmers with the shoulders. Bring those hands behind the back of the head. We're going to lift off away from the head, hover and hold. We make a Y and hold. Internally rotate, make a T. And then make an A. And then try to get the fingertips together by bending the elbows and then relax. And from here, retract the scapula. You're going to try to lift off and hover and hold. Extend the elbow. Externally rotate to the T. Make a Y and slowly. Bend the elbows. From here, 
and go ahead and lift off. Make a Y, hold, internally rotate, hold, at a T, all the way to an A, elbow hinge, and bend. Relax, retract, cover, extend the elbows, make a T, all the way to a Y. Fingertips touch. Whew. There's some swimmer hovers for you. All right, now we're going to do some standing cars and axials. Okay? So, I really like this way a little bit better than the outside version. So, I see a lot of people do the outside version. But we're actually going to do the inside version. Okay? So, I can show you that like this. Using this wall, you'll have to use a wall at your house or a barrier. You don't have to have a wall, you can just do these standing. And you can also do these like this. Okay, so if you want to do them on the knees, just make sure that the knee is bent the whole time. And then, as far as if you're seated and you're wondering what you should do, then I would just focus on internal and external rotation at the hip just like this and holding it at the end range. And if you're able to stand, you're able to push into a wall. We're going to push into that barrier. We're going to go into hip flexion, knee flexion, and dorsiflexion with the ankle. Squeeze the opposite fist. And then from here, we're going to abduct the hip and hold. Push into the barrier and drop the knee as we internally rotate and extend the hip back toward the wall, toward the back of the room. And then from here, we're going to flex the hip, and we're going to externally rotate at the hip, and draw that foot toward the opposite elbow, uh, arm hip. And then from here, we're going to abduct the hip, internally rotate all the way to extension, all the way to flexion, draw that foot up the body as far as it will go. Now we're going to go the other way. So hip extension, hip abduction, external rotation, and then all the way to hip flexion and adduction. From here, hip extension. Abduction, external rotation, hip flexion. We bring it across and down. Let's go ahead and get the other side. Hip flexion, abduction, squeeze his fist, internally rotate. Knee should be behind the other knee before it passes. Go ahead and draw that foot up for the opposite armpit, all the way up as high as it will go. Try to keep your body nice and controlled here, all the way to abduction, internal rotation, all the way to extension, and then go up. Foot goes up toward the armpit, and let's go the other way. Hip extension, abduction, external rotation, all the way to flexion, and extension, abduction, squeeze that fist, and set the foot down. Good. Now we're going to work on axial rotations at the hip. If you have a dowel, or a broom, these are actually broomsticks, you just unscrew them. I know you have a broom. So you're gonna push your hand into the wall of the broomstick or the dowel. And what we're gonna do from here is some hip axials. So we're gonna start by pushing into the wall, pushing the dowel into the ground. We're gonna abduct and externally rotate at the hip. And then from here, we're gonna internally rotate and then externally rotate at the hip. So the hip stays abducted, 
knee stays bent. All we're going to do is internally rotate, so the, the foot's going to draw up toward the sky. Now we're going to try to pull that foot forward in front of the knee. Okay, now try to draw that foot up toward the sky. Keep that hip in line. Then go ahead and now try to draw that foot up toward the sky. The other way. And down. Okay, let's switch side. And up dock the hip. Flex the knee. Externally rotate. Foot goes up and forward. Internally rotate, foot goes back and up. Externally rotate, foot goes forward and up. Internally rotate, foot goes back and up. Hold here and slowly bring it down. Good. So those are those are some hip axial rotations. So that would be the second part. We're now on the third part, okay? Standing cars and axials, okay? So let's just start some easy wrist cars, nice and slow. Extend the wrist down, fingertips are down, in, all the way in, up, up, up and out, out, out and down, down and out, all the way up, up and in, in, all the way down, all the way out, all the way up, all the way in, all the way down. So the other way, in and then up, up, up and out, out, up and down, all the way in, all the way up, up and out, all the way out, all the way down. Good, squeeze the fist, same thing. In, all the way down and around, up, in, all the way down, out, up, so the other way, up and out, down, in and then up, up, up and out, out, up and down. Elbow cards, supinate the elbow, bend the elbow, pronate and extend. Supinate, flex, pronate, extend. And then pronate, flex, supinate, extend, pronate, flex, supinate, Extend. Okay? Maybe some scapular cars forward and back. Okay, and then maybe shoulder cars. Internally rotate, extend, bilateral. One more. Okay, now we're going to do a standing pigeon. We want to pull that foot up, hold that passive rein. Good. Okay, now we're going to do a standing pigeon. We want to pull that foot up, hold that passive rein. Wherever you are, hold and breathe. What we're going to do from here is we're going to try to let go and hold this position. If you're sitting down, you're going to try to pull that foot toward your armpit. Okay, so when you let go, we're going to try to pull this foot toward that same arm or that opposite armpit. Okay, now I'm going to let go, find your passive range, take an inhale, let go, try to pull it up, hold it in five, four, three, two, and then back to your passive range. One more inhale, radiate, let go. One, two, three, four, and back. Try the other side. Switch the leg if you're sitting down. Full. Inhale, radiate, let go, hold. One, two, three, four. Five, all the way up, reset, push that leg into the ground, breathe into that passive stretch, inhale, radiate, drop, hold, five, 
four, three, two, and slowly bring it down. All right. Now we are going to do some knee and foot stuff. So if you have a box or a chair, you're going to be using that for level one. What we're going to do is just find a wall and a box or a chair. And we're just going to bring the knee over the ankle. This would be option one. Option two. Okay, if you have two dowels, okay, you can go just like this. Okay, and then option three will be all the way on the ground. Okay, so pick one of those options. You're going to start with the ankle first. We're going to bring the knee over the foot and try to bring the mid chest over the knee. Just breathe and hold here. So this is the ankles working the, uh, the lower uh, ankle, uh, lower limb here of the leg. If you have our gastroxoleus and our um, Achilles tendon, we have a lot of other stuff in there as well. So just think of it as all this stuff working together to allow your ankle to dorsiflex. Okay, so just breathe and hold. Now again, if you're using the box or if you're using the dowels, you're gonna use the same thing. We're just gonna breathe in that passive stretch. So again, how does that look if you're here? Stay where you are if you're in that third position. If you're in that box position, you can go like this, or you can just push into the wall like this, okay? From here, what we're going to do is start turning the tissues on in the back of this calf here. So we're going to start plantar flex the foot. So when we plantar flex, we use the gastroc to do that. We use the tissues in the back of the lower limb to do that. All of them combined allows us to plantar flex. So we're going to try to plantar flex our way into the ground, but since we're in dorsiflexion and range, we're not going to be able to move anywhere. That's going to be our isometric contraction. We build that up from about zero to fifty percent. So start pressing the front foot down into the ground, like gas pedaling it down. Ten percent, twenty, thirty, forty, and fifty, and hold right here. Try to turn all those tissues on. Hold sixty percent. 70, and then from here, what I want you to do is keep that intensity high, push the body or the hands into the ground, press the dowels, and then from here, I want you to try to further your dorsiflexion by trying to pull these toes and try to dorsiflex further so you can turn the tissues on on the front of the shin. So you should feel all this start to turn on, okay? If there's pain, you can get out of this position. If there's no pain, hold it for five, four, Three, two, and then back to um, passive breathing and holding. Okay, let's go ahead and switch side. Okay, now you just have to find your end range that you can control and breathe safely in. If there's any pain at any time during any of these exercises, that's something that you need to regress or use the other options like a chair, or you can um, quick video. Okay, so whatever level works best for you um, is going to matter most. So from here, you know, breathe and hold, dorsiflexion of that front ankle. So focusing on your breathing. So this is our level three position here. There are level two options on the box, and level one on a chair or a box. Just breathing and holding. Now we're gonna start plantar flexing that foot into the ground. 10%, 20%, 30, 
20 percent, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, hold, all the way to 60, 70, 80, hold it here, 5, 4, 3, 2, now dorsiflex further, turning the tissue on on the front of the leg, going deeper into your stretch, 5, 4, 3, 2, and slowly go back to your passive stretch. Good. From here, what we're going to do is our feet and ankles. So, just took a little bit of a toll on our ankles. Um, so, if you're seated, you can go like this. And if you're seated, if you're on the ground, you can just go like this. Okay? You can have your back against the wall or box. You have dorsiflex to start. And then we're going to go in. All the way in, point the toe down, all the way down and out, all the way up, up. So ankle control articular rotations, all the way down. Keep the radiation pretty high, all the way around. Let's go the other way. Nice and slow, all the way out and down, in and up, up, all the way out, all the way down and in, up, out, out. Out and down. So side, plantar flex, got to toe in and up, up and out, all the way out and down, down and in, in and up, up, up and out, all the way out, all the way down, and in and back, all the way around the other way, up, all the way in, all the way down, all the way out, all the way up. All the way in, all the way down. Good. If that knees just like this, you can stand or you can sit for this one. But I'm going to do these seated. I'm going to press just the big toe down, small toes up. And then from here, small toe all the way to big toe. Big toe is the only thing that's up. Try to keep the medial side of the foot down. And then from here, big toe down, small toes up. And then from here, all toes up. And then pinky all the way to big toe. One more, pinky all the way to big toe. And then from here, just the big toe is going to tap. One, two, three. Good. Okay. For the knees, okay, what we're going to do is, if we're seated, you're just going to take the same side of the hand on the inside of the foot, maybe on the outside of the thigh. And this is going to be our external rotation position, and then internal rotation will be just like this, okay, if you're seated. Okay. On the mat with me, going to hook that hand around the front of the foot, and then bring that hand underneath over top of the elbow. From here, this is external tibial rotation. What I like to do is just get into this position and kinetically stretch it first, putting a little bit of load and resistance in that end range. And if there is an issue, you'll immediately feel it on the inside of the knee. Okay? If there isn't any issues, then that's a good issue to have, and you can continue. From here, we're going to just breathe and hold. And then from here, I'm going to start pressing the foot into the hand. 10%, 20%, 30% and hold. And then from here, I'm going to try to pull the foot away deeper into external tibial rotation. Hold it for five, four, three, two, and then you're going to go back to the passive stretch. Now, you don't want to do that too hard, okay? Now, from here, we're going to go across opposite arm, across the opposite outside of the foot. And then we're going to hold on to the uh, back of the elbow. And then now we're in tibial 
internal rotation. Now, you might feel it on the outside of the knee here. Okay. Now, if you do feel it on the outside and there is a lot of pain, it's something I would skip. From here, hold this passive position. Internal tibial rotation, hold. And then starting to press that foot into the hand, 10%, 20, 20 to 30. 30 to 40, and then trying to lift that foot away from the hand, going deeper into internal rotation. Five, four, three, two, and one. Back to the passive stretch. That's it. We're going to go internal to external tibial rotation. Now, you don't want to be too hard on those knees, so as you progress, you want to pass the hold for two minutes. Pals press in, rally, lift away. Pals, press in, rails, lift away. Okay, so that would be internal and external tibial rotation. And from here, you can go to just knee curves, just like this. If you're on the box, same thing. You can just go like this. All right, I'm working on a chair. If you're on the mat, I'm just gonna hook the arm around. External rotation, internal rotation here, flexion. And then up and in, out and down, up and in, out and down, in and up, out and down. Okay? And then get the same side of kneecap. I'm just going to bring the fingers together underneath the knee and then push it side to side. This is an exercise that we'll do when our body is totally relaxed. If it's on a chair, it'll look like this. So you just relax this leg, you can do that just like this, okay? If you're standing, look just like this, and then if you're on the mat, same thing, okay? And then we're going to go all the way around in a circle. Kneecap should move around 360 degrees, feeling for any pain, any issues. Let's go the other way. Okay, minimal cracking is normal, pain is not normal, and if it doesn't move, that's not normal either, okay? So, you continue to move this around. Opposite side, okay, we'll start an external tibial rotation, hand comes underneath, kinetically, back and forth here. Passively stretching, checking for any issues on the inside of the knee. There are none doing this, and we're set. And we're not going into your safest efforts here. We're going very easy, passive holds, pals, and rounds. Typically, you want to hold these for about two minutes, but you know, it's not safe to do with people that you don't know. So, you want to just give them that kind of this is what you can do type of class instead of doing two minutes because you can actually injure that tissue if you do it for too long. So that's why we're not doing it for too long here. Go ahead and press the foot into the hand, hand to the foot, 10%, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 50. Pull for five, four, three, two, and then lift away from the hand. Five, four, three, two, and then relax. That internal tibial rotation, arm comes underneath the knee here, hold on to the back of the elbow, holding on to the upper foot, puts an internal rotation here, checking for issues on the outside of the knee. Breathe and hold, passive stretch to start. Remember, mobility training is not the lavish best thing to perform when you're easily bored, right? So, but just know that you're actually making a difference if you continue to do this over time, right? So from here, pressing the foot into the hand, hand into the foot, 
10 percent, 20 to 30 to 40, all the way to 50. And then lifting the leg for five, four, three, two, and one. So that would be tibial internal and external pals and rails. And then I just like to do a couple more after. And then go through the knee car, extend, internally rotate, flex, out, up, in, and down, in and up, out, and down, in, up, out, and down. And then going to that patella, side to side, up and down, all the way around. Should feel pretty good. If you're seated like me, or if you just want to at the end here, you're going to go from cat camel. And head down. All right, that's it. So you got neck and shoulders, T spine, standing cars, knee and feet, ankle, dorsi flexion. Uh, and we got ER and IR of the tibia with some co cars. So that was, I'm not sure how long that full video was, but that would be a good session for you um, when you're just trying to learn about your body's prerequisites, um, understanding pain. Uh, and also understanding where your current limitations are so you can work on them. So any of those work for you, those are things you want to work away at as quick as you can and try to select the right exercises that allow you to function better. All right, that's going to be it. Thank you.